Uh, welcome back guys. Um, you're on the handheld tripod again here. Actually, it's just a little mini pod, so it might be a tiny bit shaky. Actually, it probably will be shaky. Anyhow, um, I made that panel, test panel, to do layout for the uh, small bench top power supply. And I did a layout for width that was the opening, standard opening of a of an old drive bay. Made a tiny mistake. I allowed, <laughs> didn't allow, I went from the exact edge to the center. So this being equal to the width of an opening of a bay, which I was using for measuring, <laughs> um, you might see the problem here. The binding posts, the binding post under here, don't allow for between the, the edge of edge of this module and this outside uh, trim pot these binding posts for the ground are too far over by about a quarter of an inch so yeah this lovely vinyl faceplate was supposed to just bolt on where the blank that I made was so it would just go on the front there well, what I'm gonna have to do is recut the openings into this. Um, yeah. Mm. Not a big thing, <laughs> but it's a bit of a screw up. But anyhow, um, yeah, the uh, power boards, the boost boards, I was going to uh, just simply bolt them down in here on the bottom. Like if you could see back here where my fingers are, I was going to just mount them in there. They have um, uh, an ATX style or a Molex uh, pin on there, so I was just going to run a pin in there. And then um, the other thing that I was going to do is possibly put just some regular binding posts for the regular voltages, like a ground, a so you'd have ground 12, 5, and 3 off the, uh, the taps. For those that don't know, um, when you're looking at uh, the power leads, let's see if I can find one here. Okay, no. We'll just look at. Uh, do I have one hanging around? Yeah, yeah, I do. I've got one I've been, I've got one I've been chopping up on uh, ATX power pin, and this one I've been harvesting wire from. You have your black, which is going to be your ground. You have yellow, which I've harvested all these ones. Um, is 12 volts. Red is five. And this, I don't know if the camera's picking up very well, but orange is 3.3 volts. Um, those are pretty handy powers for, those are pretty handy power taps or voltage levels for hobby electronics. Um, you're going to find that a lot of your stuff is in the range of 12 to 3.3. And in fact, the 5 and 3.3 are great for Arduino work and, and small board work and ESP type stuff, uh, especially nowadays with more stuff coming in at 3.3. There is plenty of amperage from that style of power supply for the 5 and 3.3 volts. It's not too bad for the 12 volts on this one. And I was going to take, of course, the 12, one of these 12 volt rails, bump it up to the, the dual 30s to run these fellows. And then, again, as I was saying, taking some of my spare, I still got some spare uh, uh, lugs in there. And I was going to run those off the bottom. And then that was going to be my my um, bench supply right there and it was probably going to sit right there and then I was probably going to put my fabricator mini on top because it's about the right footprint for the fabricator mini to sit back there but uh, yeah I got some reworking to do so yeah next time you see this video it'll probably have uh, this all done to the new sizing the proper sizing and then it will be mounted back in there anyhow um, yeah that's my mistake for today. So far. I'm sure I can make more mistakes today. But that's my mistake for today. And, um... Yeah. That's where that's at. So, small setback. Nothing too big. Um, another thing. Uh, quickly. To run your ATX power supply, you, of course, those of you that know, there's the little trick where you got to short the, the two wires to switch it on. I think if I remember just off the top of my head, it's this bright green to ground. But it's also good to have a load on whichever one of your power buses has the highest amperage or 
whichever one has this extra little brown sense wire coming to it. If you see, you can get down in here, there's orange with a brown sense wire. So that's the 3.3. So what I have is I've got a just a regular bulb, which is essentially a resistor. <laughs> um, and I can't remember what, it's just like 25 watts at 110, but I'm using it as a power resistor for the 3.3 volt. And as soon as you plug that in, you'll notice that your voltages will get stable. So as long as you've got something to put a, a, a load, a safe load on the sensing rail of your power supply, you notice your, uh, your 5 volt, your 12 volt, and your 3.3, if they have any sort of fluctuation or variance, or if they're a little bit off a of spec, you might find with your power supply when you do this they come right back into spec they're what you expect and uh, that's all I had to do I just took an old bulb that uh, was from something I converted to LED so I didn't need the bulb anymore and I've just used it as a power resistor here um, in fact sometimes it faint it'll lightly uh, faintly light up but you hardly see it all now on the 3.3 it's not enough to it's not enough to heat the element enough to get light but it does act as a resistor and it does make this thing run stably Anyhow, um, I got some fixing to do, and uh, I need to get my Fabricator Mini set up because it's uh, that season again is coming with the Christmas and whatnot, and there are some small custom things I want to make that you just can't buy. Uh, those will be other videos if I get to them. Anyhow, uh, that's it for this right now, and uh, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and, and uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.